Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I was feeling a little bit nostalgic, so I decided to play with uh, Dragoonies to see, uh, to see just like some certain play lines and just get a little bit of information for testing and all that, because it is definitely a deck that I actually, you know, just do not have a very easy time parting ways with. But playing against one of my Discord buddies, and he's actually playing a Subterror uh, Zodiac deck, and so I opened very poorly after winning Rock, Paper, Scissors. My hand is absolutely god-awful, and I'm just absolutely just not not having a good time not having a fun time at all but so he goes for the nemesis archer plus barrage play which is an insane play in terms of what it allows you to get in far as far as pluses go and as far as advancing the sub terror and zodiac engine together but he targets his archer with barrage and i flip emptiness and because cards have to resolve as much as they can even if a portion of them after activation will be negated the Nemesis Archer gets destroyed by Barrage, but no special summon happens, and then the Archer doesn't get a special summon either. So at this point, I'm just like, yeah, we're just going to try and grind this out until I can draw into something that will start my plays moving, and that's ultimately where we get with that. But so, he summons an Archer next turn, attacks with it, and I use a Chalice and Damage Step on Zephyros to save it, because the Emptiness is going away anyway, uh, whether I Compulse or I Chalice, so I'd rather kill his Archer and have the Emptiness go away, and then I can Compulse his Barrage play. Because I know that the card is on the board, I know that it's an option. So, he goes into his Exceeds, and after he goes up into Tiger Mortar, so I get full value out of the Compulse, I just Compulse his thing, so that it just goes away and I don't have to deal with it. Now, I get very lucky and draw Dragon Ravine for turn, and I've got Red Eyes Darkness Metal in my hand, and the Zephyros is about to go to Grave without having, you know, used its bounce effect. So, there's just a lot of good play that I have capable, like, capabilities of doing, and unfortunately, my uh, client is getting, getting hit with a few lag spikes here. Uh, so that's why the play sort of kind of slows down in terms of what I'm able to do. Um, and then I start just like just trying to speed rush clicking, and it ultimately just mean, it's, it means that I'm not registering clicks on certain things. So it's just uh, it's me getting a little bit excited in the game that I played because I was like, oh my god, I drew Ravine, I held the Phalanx, I got rewarded by holding the Phalanx, and now it's just amazing because now I get to absolutely just kill him because there was no way that I could have killed him had I not drawn that Ravine. Even if I had drawn something like Ducks, the only cards I could have drawn to have basically killed him this turn was Ravine, or another Phalanx, or Mistleton. Like, it was it was a good amount of cards, but there's still very minor copies, like amounts of copies of them in my deck. Because I could have just as well had drawn another Zephyros, I could have drawn a Dux, and the, that would have been useless. I would have had a normal summon Phalanx and literally just make Vajrayana swing and then make, like, a Crystal Wing and pass. <laughs> like, it would have been really bad. Uh, but I drew the ravine, and because I held that phalanx, I just got super rewarded because that meant that I had the red eyes in my hand still as well. Because when I drew that compulse, I was like, okay, I can't set two cards this turn, or else if I draw a ravine, it's going to be bad for me. But end up getting rewarded, doing a quick little game shot there. And the reason I did it in the way I did it was so I could make the tall me, and then I could add back missile to make a, a level eight synchro afterwards if something like a swift scarecrow came down. But in the same essence, I could have probably just made crystal wing, and it would have been fine. But it's whatever. But so game two. I have a Rageki in my hand, and my hand is ultimately not really that good. Although it is a level 8 synchro, it's no traps, it's no backup. But I do have Rageki for his board, and I do have Pod Desires, which I could use to try and draw into something. Potentially Ravine, Ducks, Instant Fusion, a lot of really good extenders that I could potentially have in, uh, in my deck that would work really well for me in any specific instance. Uh, but unfortunately, he, uh, he messes up his zoo combo because... He starts with Broad Bull instead of uh, instead of the Lyca, which he uses strictly because it works. It looks better than uh, than Borbo. He strictly uses it for looks. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he ends up with only two engrave, and he makes the Emerald uh, because he doesn't get his Borbo search or his not Borbo his uh, Broad Bull search because of the fact that he uh, that he overlaid with it. Now it's really late in the evening for both of us, and he's like five hours ahead in time, and I'm filming it at midnight, and I've been up for hours. Um, and like for the entirety of like a 24 hour day beforehand so I was already tired and he's been up for even like longer and he lives five hours ahead of time so it's 5 a.m. where he's playing from uh, gotta give him gotta give him points for that uh, for at least trying to play uh, but so I'm able to regeki his board and part of the desires draws me into a ravine which is great because that means I just get to go for it I get to absolutely just do things and I drew a chalice as well so that's a pseudo defensive card I've actually really really liked Chalice in this deck because one, it helps you with uh, with basically pushes. Uh, it helps you with pushes for uh, for your game, for your game shots. It helps you with, you know, outing Dryden. 
It helps you do so many things. It lets you out cards that are very problematic cards, but then it's also a settable trap in the essence that it basically functions similarly to strike and that it can just negate effects. Um, it's not like the best form of, of effect negation in the world, but it's good because it's good going first and second. So I've really been liking Chalice in this deck uh, just as a personal uh, thing. But So I'm just doing a Dragoonie combo here because I just, I get to do, do everything. It's... It's not even it's not even like fair the things I'm able to do because I drew into another Mistleton at some point during my turn as well. It was probably off the desires as well, or it was for turn or something. So my combo was Ravine Phalanx double Mistleton, and so so that's to the point when it gets absolutely ridiculous uh, for what you're doing. And so I'm able to make Crystal Wing, Darkness Metal, Ptolemy, and a Mistleton. So that's well over like 10,000 points of damage because. Uh, it's like 8,500 without the Mistleton, and then it's another 2,100 on top of that. So I believe I remember Stardust, Red Med, and uh, Bouncer or Ptolemy was exactly 8,000. Yeah, it's exactly 8,000, so there's uh, 26 more on top of that with the Mistleton and the extra 500 from the Crystal Wing. But anyway, going into the third and final game, he goes first again. I'm just going second like all the time, apparently, other than game one where... I go first and I don't open any form of combo that I could utilize. I just opened emptiness and was able to just grind my way into a favorable situation. But he opens with Nemesis Archer and Barrage. I max C the Barrage and so at this point it's like yeah kinda probably gonna have to go for it here because of the fact that I mean he's seen that I run Rageki. I don't think I let him know. No he knows I play Chalice as well because that's what song he saw that game one. So he has knowledge that I play Chalice and Raigeki, so I definitely have outs to Dryden. But I guess he's just banking on the fact that he's hoping that I don't draw them, because he's also seen that, you know, my deck doesn't play anything like Hieratics. It plays a lot of, like, trap and reactive cards, because he, he hasn't seen Hieratics by now. So, like, there's, in theory, not that much of a ceiling that I have if I can't stick my ducks, which Dryden prevents. But so he goes into his, uh, his zoo play, uh, makes his Stalagmo from the Nemesis Archer, um, I'm surprised that he actually just doesn't get a draw here. I guess he just doesn't play like that many traps in his deck that he's trying to dig for, uh, per se. And it doesn't seem like he's playing uh, the Ghost Trick stuff either, because if instead of making the Emerald, a common play would be to make Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief, detach for Ghost Trick Scare, and then be able to you know use that to flip up your monsters on my turn to be reactive. Uh, but it just doesn't seem like that's the case in like in what he's playing. He's testing the build. So I don't think it's something that he's playing. I think he's also playing like Invoked in here, um, if I remember him uh, him, uh, him correctly from when we were discussing the deck earlier. But anyway, so I've drawn like eight or nine cards off Max C and still didn't get to a Dragon Ravine. Only off my Pot of Desires did I finally get to Dragon Ravine. And I banished all but one of my Duxes and all but one of my Zephyroses. But I didn't banish my Red Med and nothing of value was lost except for, I think, maybe Soul Charge. So I still have one Zephyros and one Dux because they're both three ofs and I banished two of each. And so I'm able to just do things. So I have Raigeki, and I have Chalice, so I have multiple outs, but I just Raigeki is bored, and now I can just, I'm free to go ham. Because off the desires, I drew Terraforming and Upstart. Played the Upstart after I Terraforming. I have another Terraforming for another Ravine, should it be the case, because the other Ravine is still in the deck. Um, in case I get something like Ghost Ogre or something, I've definitely got another Ravine to follow up. And, uh... And so from here, I'm just able to combo because I got triple institution in my hand. I drew every card but Ravine until I activated Desires. It was it was absolutely ridiculous. Like that, those Ravines were so far down in my deck. I didn't even banish a Terraforming off of Desires. I don't remember. If I don't, I don't think if I remember correctly, I didn't banish a single copy of Ravine or Terraforming off that Desires. So after all my max C draws and after Desires banishing ten. The Ravines were within the last 10 cards of my deck. All five copies of them were within the last 10 cards in my deck. And it was just kind of insane in terms of just being like, yeah, this is a thing. Uh, all of them were just at the bottom. It's like I literally got like stacked by the program <laughs> to not draw a Ravine, uh, which I find absolutely ridiculous and hilarious at the same time. But So I'm able to just combo up and keep doing these things, making Queen Dragon Jin with Norden and Zephyros, bringing back Mistleton, Making Ptolemy, because Ptolemy can then detach Mistleton, add it back, tribute over the flanks. I'm just going for damage at this point. He's at 9k, which I can easily hit um, at this point, because I can just make Crystal Wing here, and I've got 9k on board at least. Um, and then I've still got the Darkness Metal loaded for its second time to uh, use an effect. Uh, but I don't actually have a Synchro as the as the non-tuner uh, here, because of the fact that I did the Mistleton, like, looping it back to my hand to summon it again. So had to go for Stardust, so it's a little bit less damage, but it's still fine. I've still got 
well over 10,000 on board. That's 21, 27, 28, 22, and 25. Like, just the first le the first numbers of all of those cards are twos, so it's at least 10,000. And then it's another, like, couple thousand on top of that from the extra little hundreds that they all tack on to the end of it. It's like 12,000 or something damage. So, overall, just, like, being really explosive with this deck is really fun, and I really enjoy it, but... I really just got really lucky here that he wasn't playing a deck that actually played a lot of traps. Like, it wasn't a very reactively based deck, because that is the Dragoonie deck's, like, weakness, is literally anything that stops plays. Um, and luckily he didn't draw any, like, hand traps like Maxi or Ghost Ogre if he played them. And a couple of his plays were questionable, but like I said, he he was up at 5 a.m. to play this with me, so I was, I was more than happy to, like, accept, like, his, uh, his kindness of play. Uh, because of the fact that it's late for me and it's even later for him, but that's neither here nor there But anyway, this was just a quick little video that I wanted to do uh, The games were quick the match was quick and I sped up the video so that made it even quicker So doesn't waste too much of your time, but anyway as always guys Thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below of the deck list on screen So like there's a few changes. I'm probably gonna make to the deck list I do want to cut two cards and add like one Garuda and one baby rock into the list because that increases the ceiling of what you're able to do by a ton even just being one ofs and because there's so many like duplicate copies of things like Zephyros and stuff in the list there were multiple times during these games where I could have added Garuda off of Gatorg and discarded something else so there's just there's a lot of times that it comes up but I probably wouldn't play more than one of it because of the fact that I'm trying to keep the deck very good at being very streamlined at like good two card interactions like there's a reason there's three Zephyros in here is because Ravine Zephyros is something that's still really strong to open if you can back it up with a ton of traps like it's it's based off minimal investments but if you do put lots of investments into your plays then you can also just take the ceiling as high as the sky will let you in terms of what you can do with your extra deck and your main deck and your board so that's basically the theory that I put into this list that you see but anyway let me know what you guys think in the comments down below as I've already said like comment subscribe to all that nonsense all that stuff Links are in the description to my Facebook page and Patreon link uh, page if you want to go support me directly and get in on a monthly giveaway at the end of this month for a box of Raging Tempest. If you, you want to support me directly and get in on a giveaway, then that's definitely something you'd want to go check out if you like to win free shit and all that sort of nonsense. And it just supports me a ton, helps me make things possible for the channel going forward into the future. But anyway, that's enough of this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual. Let me know what you think again in the comments down below. And take care, guys. If you want me to play with more Dragoonies... Uh, like this video. Uh, if this video gets tons of likes, then I'll know that you guys want me to experiment more with this deck because I think this deck definitely has, you know, a certain amount of potential because of how limitless the combos are. But anyway, that's enough for this. Take care, guys. Let me know what you thought and all that. I'm, I can't articulate thoughts right now. Bye.